pounds of fish. What? Two pounder. What is up y'all and welcome to a, another episode of Fresh Water. If you're new to the channel, Fresh Water is a series I do where I go check out ponds in my area that I've never fished before. I break them down and I try to figure them out, catch some bass. Um, so today I'm at a spot that I just kind of looked up and this is one of the most promising spots that I've seen in a long time. Look at this, there's like this little channel right here and it leads into another small pond. While I was talking to y'all, a bass ran up here chasing bait. And so, yeah, I'm pretty pumped, I'm pretty pumped. So I've got a couple lures tied on to start out today's challenge. Um, I'm really excited, I have high hopes, y'all. I did leave a few things at home, left my pliers at home, and I left my scale at home on accident. So if we catch something massive, I mean, I'm just gonna have to guesstimate, and I'll let y'all guesstimate as well, but I've got a slobber knocker and a fluke tied on to start. Just got two rods with me today, and it's a little windy. Wind can be good though, but y'all are gonna have to bear with it for the audio. Um, I'm excited, let's, let's get started. Let's get started, y'all. I had another bass come up in this little canal here and uh, eat bait. So we're gonna throw around this little fluke. It's more of a baby bass color, but I think it could uh, could pay off. I don't know if there's any like shad or anything in here. So we're gonna go with the more natural presentation to start. It is another chilly morning, y'all. Oh, I need to cancel my, my map, get that out of here. Uh, Nine o'clock, later start than normal, but I mean, looking good. Looking good. Like the breeze on the water. It's going to really help any kind of like chatter bait, spinner bait, moving bait bite. And um, it's not too hot out here. I mean, it's pretty cold. Let me see if it says temperature on my watch. Uh, oh, 66 right now, y'all. That is, <laughs> that is so nice. This looks like a super shallow pond. I'm throw the slobber knocker around. Oh, that really felt like a bite, but I'm getting all kinds of gunk on the lure. So probably is just as shallow and mucky as I was thinking. The water's a nice like bluish tint, but it's fairly clear. So that'll be good. All right, let's go fish the little pond before we uh, get too far away from it, fish the big pond. There's a fish. First throw with that fluke. All right. There we go. Oh, where'd he fling my... Oh, it's on my line. <laughs> I'm so dumb. Little guy, but that was too easy. First throw in with that fluke. Man. All right, y'all. We were on the board early. This pond, it's got me excited little bitty guy maybe a 10 inch or something like that but let's get him back in the water all right little man thank you for being first fish of the day let's go okay so now that i've caught him i don't want to say it's like 100 percent confirmed but the first thing i noticed when i got here lots of little bait kind of flicking around and running and occasionally a bass that i presumed they were bass would come up and take a big swipe at these bait, uh, these little pods of bait. So I thought, you know, like a fluke, this represents dying bait fish of some type. This is a baby bass color, but I mean, it just looks like a little pond bait fish, honestly. So I'm gonna throw that around. It's gonna look like an easy meal. I can use this to target the shallow area super well. Um, and I'm gonna be able to target some good like structure without getting snagged up in it also. Let's go ahead and get a few more casts in with the fluke, y'all. Okay, let's go check out Big Pond, see if we can find a place to throw the chatterbait around. Okay, it's opened up a bit more here. I'm gonna see if I can fish the chatterbait. 
I'm hoping this isn't one of those like dead grass ponds where we've got all that dead vegetation and you really just can't fish anything well in that. Y'all, I don't think I'm gonna be able to fish anything subsurface very well in this big pond. I've got on floor carbon line, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and tie on some type of topwater walking bait walk along these shallows. I mean, fish seem pretty active, so maybe I can get one to come up and eat this and at least it won't get snagged. It'd be fun too, just to walk it around. Okay, let's see what we got in the old box. Got the Weston Walker. This is a Strike King Sexy Dog Junior. That might be kind of the size we want to go for. And I've got a Hound as well, it's black, but kind of feeling this white belly today, this like shad pattern. Let's put this bad boy on. Now, I'd recommend to y'all throwing your walking baits on braid or monofilament for sure. Um, what's going to happen is the fluorocarbon sinks and it's going to be actually pulling this bait down kind of like into the water while I'm trying to work it. But if I work it fast enough, I can get away with it. You can always get away with throwing just about anything on any line. Um, people are going to get mad and kind of butthurt about it though when they see you doing it. <laughs> so we're just going to be throwing them out further than that but see look how I can work him even on the floor carbon all right honestly if we can get a like one good blow up on this it's gonna be totally worth it whoa is that going for my lure? What was that? Well, y'all, I'm gonna keep walking, keep looking around, looking for signs, some clues that'll tell me more about the fish in this pond. Um, just kind of looking around for any structure in the water see if it gets deeper at any point sorry if that wasn't on me there is definitely a levee over this way i'm heading towards so deeper water could be key in this big pond if not we might just loop back around and hammer that little pond where we caught that one fish but for now we're gonna just keep looking be optimistic okay y'all well i'm officially confused as heck uh no fishing this is a catch and release lake what how how's it catch and release if you can't fish i don't i don't understand I, d I don't well i guess this is the part where i go back to where i was and i just grind it out there or backtrack i'll fish a little bit more i guess on the way back but i don't even know i guess it maybe means don't fish on that side and then it's catch and release everywhere but like that side is i mean everybody's got up an iron gate or a fence, but like, I guess a privacy thing. I, I don't know. Still see the occasional bass running bait up on the bank. So, just throw the fluke around a little bit. In the shallows. Well, I guess I'm just gonna try to catch something off the shallow bank. I changed lures on y'all, by the way. We got a uh, suspending lipless crank now. Yeah. Fish first throw with it. Yeah, baby. Let's go. I got a fish on the lipless crank. First chunk out in the middle. The first chunk is not a chunk, it is a dank. A dinky boy. I think I walked out of the camera to uh, make that cast because I'm under some trees. So sorry about that. But this is a suspending crank from uh, ISV. I gotta have a mystery tackle box and I didn't know suspending lipless cranks were a thing until I got this out of it. He got me a dinker. We got a dinker, yeah. yeah. There's your catch and release. Um, so I made the switch because I, it felt like this pond is like decently pressured. It felt like Maybe there's smaller fish in here. They're definitely chasing, and I really just need to cover ground. I didn't think they wanted to commit to breaking the surface for bait um, all over the pond. I've seen some places where I think there's some big fish here and there that are willing to do that, but 
something about the profile of a lipless crank you got the narrow body um and it's just a it's a great great lure for covering ground and just getting a bite honestly this is a get bit cover ground lure so we're gonna keep throwing it around Whoa, we are back at the beginning. That's a fish. I got him too. Not a bad one. Yes, sir. That's not a bad fish. Wait. Okay. <sighs> we went and got ourselves a decent one. Now he ain't he ain't nothing special. Maybe two pounds. Skinny. Skinny fella. It's okay. Fall's coming. He'll be feeding up. Getting fat. Turning into a pretty decent little morning. Fish number uh, three. And he ain't bad. They're getting bigger, y'all. Let's let him go. <laughs> All right, dude. Oh, uh, yeah. Get out there. Okay, it does get a good bit deeper. I can see now. All right. Um, if anybody's wondering, this is Berkeley's uh, version of the fluke. I grabbed a couple packs of these one day. It was like everything else was sold out. So I was like, let me try a new brand. And uh, they're pretty good. Can't lie, they're pretty good. Um, and they're supposedly have that scent on there that helps fish hold on longer, yada, yada. You know all that. Caught him to the left of these little patches of uh, brush out there. So, good deal. Maybe there'll be another one. It looks like it is a good bit deeper if you get a little bit more off to the left. Is that a fish? Yeah. Oh, another nice, nicer one. Two in a row. Okay. Stuff's happening. Wait, oh, he's better than the last one. He's bigger than that one. He's like if that one had uh, been eaten better. Two casts in a row. We're getting on him, y'all. Let's go! Man. Look, he's got a uh, funky mouth on him. You can see, I mean, it's a catch and release pond, but you can see these guys have been caught before. They're not new to lures. You can, you can see where they've been hooked pretty good. Two pounder. If he had a big old belly, we could be getting near three pounds with this one. Two in a row on the fluke, y'all. Let's go. All right. All right, bud. I'm going to let you go right here. Let's give him a nice, gentler release. Uh-oh. Okay, good, good, good. All right, let's keep the fluke train rolling. Kind of just throwing them uh, as far as I can. I'm trying to get to that bank. There's a different bit of grass growing on that bank. I don't know if it's given structure or whatever. Maybe I'm throwing in a deep pocket that I don't even know is there. But it's like you get it there, you give it a few twitches. That throw isn't really what I wanted, but you get it there, you give it a few twitches, and there's bass. All right, y'all, that is a wrap on today's fishing adventure. I had a good time and I'll call that a success. We landed four fish, which is way better than I've been doing for about a month now. Um, Y'all are probably excited to see some fish actually on the videos. Um, but yeah, I was gonna go around to the other side. I didn't really know the rules of the area with the, can you fish or can you not? And like, I don't know, I saw a bunch of potential Karens sitting in their backyards glaring at me with their little yip yap dogs barking. So I decided to just stay on the safe side. You know what I'm saying? Also, there's a tow truck in the street, and I don't think it's here for me, but it's enough to get my attention. So we're gonna call it a day. Um, as you know, the days keep going on, fishing's gonna get better and better as we get closer to fall. Um, bass are about to start just 
going crazy. Let me know if you want me to put out a video about like my favorite lures and techniques or whatever. Make sure you hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and be sure you subscribe to the channel. That way you won't miss out on any future bass fishing action, y'all, in the great state of Texas. All that being said, I'll catch y'all in the next video. Peace.